Pastor Mike here. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time today. Uh, If you haven't already, I'd love for you to sign up for our daily email. It's a great way to start the day. It's the way that I start my day. (laughs) And it's a way to bring God's word straight into your inbox first thing in the morning. Uh, My teammates at Time of Grace do a fantastic job of giving you video and written devotions, blog posts, podcast episodes, and the occasionally fun and quirky social media posts. And all of it's to encourage you with God's amazing word. Just go to timeofgrace.org to sign up today. In the first video, we talked about why we say that betrayal feels like being stabbed in the back. But if you think about it, it kind of feels more like being stabbed in the heart. And so how do you yourself heal internally if you've been betrayed by a friend? That's kind of a challenging question. Because when you think of healing from all of the pain and it feels like you've been stabbed in the heart, all you can really think of is maybe think of the things that this lady in my church thought of. She had a long laundry list of all of the events that led up to this betrayal. Everything that had happened that had brought her and her friend closer and closer and closer. And then this crazy twist of events through which her friend stabbed her in the back. And she even had a lot to share about everything that has followed. And and maybe you can relate. When you think about healing internally, it's really easy to come up with a list and the list starts with sentences like, they did this and and they did that. And again, as we said, that's, that's not okay. The pain that they've caused. But what if I told you that making a list of all of the things that they've done, keeping track of every way that you can point at them for fault, what if I said that that's not the most helpful thing at all, especially in comparison to identifying specifically what is causing you so much pain inside. Think of it this way. Each of us have probably had a cut on our hand before. When that happens to me or any of my family members, I tell my kids to go and get what we call the magic potion, that ointment that you get. And when we get that, we don't pour all of that or squeeze it out of the tube into a bucket and then dunk the whole hand into the bucket so that it's sopping wet with this ointment dripping down to our elbow. Besides that being a really weird thought, it, that's not really helpful. No, you apply it specifically to the place where the cut is, the place that is causing pain. And if we do that when it comes to a cut on our hand, why would it be any different for the proverbial knife in our back? So what is it specifically? Trying as hard as you can, can you do something for me by making a list? A list that doesn't start with sentences like they did this and they did that, but it hurts me here and it hurts because of this. For the lady in my church, it hurt because she thought she had been so careful. So she feels a sense of guilt. Why would she open herself up when she knew better? Maybe you can relate. You doubt yourself and wonder if you can be safe again. And that sense of insecurity is painful. Maybe write that down. Maybe you can add to the list the feeling of regret that you can no longer go and talk to the person that you would normally talk to when you feel this pain, maybe precisely because the person you would normally go to is the friend who caused this pain to begin with. Regret, that's painful. It sometimes even can be described as grief. It's like a a source of joy and life and love and happiness and confidence and trust has been killed and buried. And it feels like there's this pain even in your gut. That's grief. Can you write that down? And then in addition to writing that list down of what exactly hurts, how it might bring up pain from the past, why it exactly feels like grief, writing all of those things down, Can you do me a second favor? Actually, it's for yourself. Commit it to God. You see, there's somebody who knows all too well what this type of betrayal is that is from a friend. A long time ago, there was a man by the name of David. And David had this close friend by the name of Saul. Saul was king and David was going to be the next king, but there was never this rivalry that existed inside of David's head, but it crept in inside of Saul's head. Saul had promised he would never turn on David until until he did. 
He even tried to kill David and David went running. Saul hunted him. David even had opportunities to try and point to all of the things that Saul did and he could have taken Saul out. From a worldly perspective, he probably could have defended those decisions if he would have just taken Saul out. Saul, you did this and you did this and you did this. But for somebody who understood very well what betrayal was, consider the things that David did in those scenarios. Two scenarios where he could have taken Saul out. He committed it to the Lord. The Lord and his timing is going to take care of it. Consider what else David did. I encourage you to read through the Psalms. Many of them, especially in the first half, are written by King David. He doesn't say things in always a pretty way, and sometimes he says things that might shock you, but these songs, these prayers are not meant to be pretty. They're meant to be real, and yes, they are even raw. But consider these words from somebody who understands betrayal all too well. From Psalm 37. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when others succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those evil who are evil will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will prosper. You hear that? Commit your way to the Lord. God's promise to you is not to predominantly work to create a visible evidence of him carrying out justice on that other person so long as we point at them. No. Identifying the pain inside enables you to commit all of that to the Lord who promises to help you and yes, even to heal you. He will do this. So of all the things that we can think of that they've done, and as real and as raw as that pain is, bring those specific prayers, those specific and individual pains, the source of struggle from the betrayal of that friend, bring all of those to the Lord. It not only enables you to refrain from anger just against them, it enables you to open up your heart to God who promises you, and he always follows through, who promises you to help you, to bring you peace, to take care of the pain that they have caused in his own way and in his own timing. He will most certainly do this.